Welcome back to Center Stage at World Water Week. My name is Andreas Carlson, and this is the second now of a series of wrap-ups where we will talk to friends and colleagues to hear their take on what's happening during the week. Uh, and with me on stage today, we have Lourdes Alvarez and we have Casondo Molenga. Now, you are both uh, program managers with CWI. Uh, Lourdes for the uh, Latin America office based in uh, Bogota, Colombia. And Casonde, you're with the Africa Regional Center based in Pretoria, South Africa. Uh, I know that this is the first World Water Week that you attend, at least on site. Uh, so let me start there. What is your first impressions after these first few days, uh, Lourdes? Well, it's my second World Water Week. First one was last year online, but definitely be here in Estocolm, it's pretty different. Uh, just having the opportunity to meet the people around, just have these quick talks and just being updated on what is happening in the other institutions is really great, especially after more than two years, like just meeting people through Teams or through Zoom, it's definitely... Uh, very different situation. I, I think much more fulfilling when you are you can just talk and hug people and just be so close that you can just share your experiences like more deeply. And it's even the first visit to Sweden, isn't it? Yes, first yeah. time in Estocolm, first time in Sweden. So very happy to be here and uh, yeah, feel very lucky of this opportunity also to meet my other colleagues in Siwi, uh, not only here in Estocolm, but also my other colleagues in yes. other offices. Absolutely. As Cassandra. And Cassandra also joining us in Sweden for the first time. Uh, yeah. Your impressions? Yeah, definitely. This is my first time uh, joining you in Sweden. I attended the last World War Week online. So uh, it's, I've been very glad to meet uh, people with like-minded like, uh, like uh, you know, scenarios where they are interested in the water sector, uh, sanitation as well. It's been quite exciting uh, attending some of the sessions, uh, which have, have been very enriching you know, as far as knowledge is concerned. So I'm very glad to be here. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah, lovely to have you. And when we spoke ahead of this conversation, uh, I suggested that, <laughs> right, so this is a good opportunity to speak about some water-related challenges in your respective regions. And you both said the same thing, <laughs> yeah. which was what? No. no, let's talk about opportunities and not challenges. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Fair enough, fair enough. Let's do that. But maybe we should just set the scene a little bit. What do you think? Okay, let's yeah. do that. So maybe just... Touch on, so what is, how would you describe the water situation in Latin America? Well, I think that it's a very tricky question to answer in a couple of minutes. Small but, region, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but let me say that um, I think as in other regions too, we have an issue, an issue about access, yeah. especially in sanitation and especially in rural areas. Um, in sanitation, we have had like limited progress in the last years and uh, definitely is one of the main challenges, especially thinking about water treatment where we have like wastewater treatment where we have very low levels on that case. Um, also, there's uh, not only access, but the quality of the, of the services, like how to, how to achieve these uh, sustainable and resilient uh, services, thinking about all these climate events and other risks that we have in the region. And also we have all the uh, financing, of course, and I think that's also general. And finally, how we ensure an enabling um, environment to make sure that we can plan, we can finance, we can coordinate among the different actors. So to achieve this objective of having um, quality services for um, all the people, right? And Cassandra, Southern Africa, uh, a yeah. region where we often hear Correct. Uh, stories uh, about water shortages. De de definitely. There are shortages, but I think it's good to dwell on the positives because there's, there are a lot of strides that have been done, that, that have been taken in order to ensure food security. I'll give you an example of the Zambezi water course, the Zambezi River, uh, that flows from the Kalene Hills in Zambia right up to Mozambique. So there's a Zambezi Water Course Commission that has been formed 
between eight riparian states. So there are conventions that have been signed, protocols, joint, joint protocols, and so forth. So there's a lot that is happening where the different member states come together. There's an agreement on how they are going to use the water course, uh, data collection, data dissemination, and so forth. So you find that there's peace. Instead of competing for the resource, cooperation is encouraged and it is fostered. And as a result, there's peace within the, the member countries and cooperation is, uh, is ongoing. So I, I'm glad to say the Zambezi Water Course is one of the, uh, you know, one of the best examples of water cooperation, transboundary, because the river flows with, uh, uh, along eight uh, different nations. Yeah. It's fascinating how you immediately turn towards the solutions and uh, the opportunities <laughs> rather than stay with the, the, what the, I the problems, <laughs> which was yeah, the challenges. You know, I love the, it. The, Thank you. There are definitely, uh, there are definitely uh, yeah, yeah. problems, uh, <laughs> mismatch between supply and demand, uh, climate change. Have, there's been droughts for several years, uh, like the, the, the Cariba where at certain times power generation was hampered because there was not enough water. So, a lot of challenges, yes, but, you know, we, we yeah. soldier on. And then, of course, there's uh, pollution. That needs to be tackled head on. Yeah. 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 And Lourdes, if we look at the opportunities, let's look at the positives on your side of the world. Yeah, definitely we have a lot of opportunities and we are seeing some of them here in some of the sessions where we can see of different projects and different um, initiatives where we can ensure or we can uh, support this uh, path to sustainable and resilient um, access to water and sanitation and hygiene. Uh, for example, the NDCs, uh, we did like uh, an analysis for Latin America and the Caribbean, and uh, definitely there's, the NDCs recognize the water security as an opportunity, also linked with the need of access of resilient uh, services. And um, yeah, it recognizes water security as a priority, so we have that also. We also have the, um, the uh, uh, green uh, funds, the uh, green climate funds, where also water and sanitation is one key part of these funds where uh, countries can ask for financing for specific projects. Um, another um, opportunity, uh, thinking about moving along with um, safely management sanitation, also circular uh, economy, uh, taking into account climate change, the different uh, programs that are taking that into account um, to be able to ensure uh, quality services. So I think there's a lot of opportunities in LAC. We are working with several partners that it's very important how to work and coordinate uh, among partners. We are working mainly with UNICEF, with SIDA, with the IDB, the Inter-American Development Bank. Uh, we are doing technical assistance and um, knowledge generation in 17 countries. Uh, each one of with their own context and, and challenges, but definitely all of them working together to to improve the sector and to improve the relations and to improve the governance of the sector. So yeah. definitely a lot of a lot of uh, opportunities to go. And Cassandra, can you give us some examples of some of the actual projects and concrete uh, action that you are are working on? Thank you so much. So at the ARC in Pretoria, we've got. One of the projects we're implementing, which is called the Transforming Investments in African Rainfed Agriculture. Uh, apparently, we are having a session tomorrow at 11 hours, so I would encourage people to come and uh, view online. So, what the project is all about is uh, it, it's aimed at uh, you know attracting investments for the smallholder farmer uh, using rainfed techniques in the Zambezi Basin. So, we realize that uh, the smallholder farmer is the frontline managers of water conservation, because there's a lot that they can do in water harvesting techniques in order to feed and you know, alleviate the food security challenges that are faced for the rural majority. So as CIWI, we uh, are in the process of implementing this project. We want to build business cases where we plow in uh, the funding and look at what the return on investment is after one, two, three, uh, harvest seasons. So we have, we've had hotspots within the Zambezi Basin. There are two in Zambia. There's one in uh, Zimbabwe. And then there are two in Malawi, one bordering Tanzania to the north and Mozambique to the south. So we, we just concluded um, 
side visits, we saw firsthand what the people are doing, the, 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 the rural farmers and so forth. And so we, we get an understanding of the techniques. So what we want to do, we want to raise awareness uh, and begin to see that, you know, enhanced rainfed agriculture is worth investing in. Because, you know, Africa, the, if you look at the topography, about 95% of the land mass is, is tailored towards irrigated agriculture. Only 5% is, uh, you know, tailored towards irrigated agriculture. So we need to do a lot to help the rural farmer with the methods that are very scientific and then uh, raise awareness uh, mm. around that. And, and raising awareness is, of course, something that is really ongoing at this conference also. Uh, and you've been here for a couple of days now. There were a few online days uh, last week. What are some of your highlights, Lourdes, from, from the week so far? Hmm. So far, I think it's very interesting to hear about different experiences in different countries with different setups of, of what the water and sanitation sector is in each country and thinking about uh, governance, thinking about um, uh, utilities, the way of the services provided to different regions. So for me, one of the key challenges is how to um, how to get all these best practices or case uh, cases studies in the different countries and how to get the best of them to adapt to my region, in this case, Latin America and the Caribbean, because they are best practices in their own context. So what is the key lessons learned or the key uh, successful um, keys to bring to our country. So that's really interesting. And I've been in three, four sessions, for example, in regulation with different examples in different countries. So definitely there's a lot to learn from our colleagues. So hopefully in these three days, that three more days that we have on the World Water Week, we can just keep this um, knowledge sharing that I think that it's, it's key to... Um, to be able to improve as a CWI and also as the as a sector yeah. institutions working in the sector. And Cassandra, some highlights from the past few days? Thank you so much. Uh, I attended one of the sessions which was on the international high-level panel uh, on water investments. Uh, key amongst my takeaways were what is being done in order to secure the 30, mil 30 billion infrastructure deficit annually in order for us to meet the SDG goals. So the bar is quite high, but the uh, actionable steps have been set into motion that can be taken in order to realize the goal. So the high-level panel uh, is involved in high-level advocacy, resource mobilization, as well as peaceful dialogue. Uh, Zambia, for instance, uh, launched the Zambia Investment uh, Forum, at which the president uh, promulgated the, uh, the document. It was well received, and there are steps that have been you know, that are being taken towards, uh, you know, investing in uh, water resources as well as sanitation. So that's quite uh, a highlight for me. And then there was the harnessing global uh, development agenda on the road to 2023. As you know, in 2023, it's going to be the uh, United Nations uh, Water Convention. So there are different agendas. Uh, we want to look at how we can, you know, marry everything so that the, the convention is a highlight and it's a pivotal moment uh, so that we can alleviate the challenges of water scarcity and sanitation the world over. Thank you. Thank you very much, Cassandra Molenga. Thank you, Lourdes Alvarez. Uh, you, 15 minutes moves quickly when you talk okay. about interesting things. And uh, thank you all for joining us uh, at Nora Latin and online. This was the second of uh, in a series of wrap-ups, as I mentioned initially, and we have one more to go. And I see one of the guests for that wrap-up being in the venue as we speak. So do look out for that. It's on Thursday, a bit earlier. Thank you. <laughs>